All right, uh, welcome to another week here at Stitch Media as we work on the game Terror Arium. Uh, I'm Jeff, I'm the art director here, uh, and you'll be joining me as I work on some uh, concept art. Um, this is a continuation from last week's stream, if you caught that. Uh, last week I was working on what I was calling the Vanilla Mugu, which was the standard um, um, concept for a Mugu, what the most uh, generic version would be. Uh, we would come up with that for a common mesh, so we could use that for a rig. Um, and so what I was working on this week was um, the actual concepts of the different Mugu types. Um, and so what I'll, I'll quickly show you through what we have, um, what we have already, and actually move this one over. Um, oops. So this was one of our uh, earlier uh, Mugu types that we already have in, the uh, our Igneous Mugu. Um, we also have this guy. Uh, which we're calling our dense mugu. Uh, let me hide some of this drawing that stuff. And so these are the first two characters that are actually in the, the game as is uh, already. Uh, we've currently updated their their meshes to work alongside with our our uh, uh, common rig that we're going through. Um, so the new stuff to show you is stuff like this guy, the Sticky Mugu. Uh, now I just kind of finished him off uh, not too long ago today. Um, I'll probably show you some sketches I have I made along the way of working on this guy. Um, so to start off something like this, just getting... Um, actually, there was a bunch more before this. This is really very quick sketching. Um, and so... The concept of this guy is that uh, um, you could shoot them out and then it will create sticky areas that will trap uh, various monsters along the path. Um, but I also wanted to play with just the visual style of him and make him kind of look like uh, he kind of impedes himself in a way uh, just because of his stickiness. Um, I wanted something a little more... Uh, that looks like he could be dripping like you know his clothes are all wet so he has trouble moving in it um, when I got to the stage of actually drawing some of his feet um, let's see what's the other one I think it's this one um, I started playing around more with uh, the dripping aspect the clumpiness of it uh, then really settled on this one over here which was, uh, you know, not so much in the shape of mushroom, but it did have like the common cap uh, of the first two. Um, so here I was thinking of, you know, make him loose and drippy, and I see low slung pajamas, uh, the feet and his uh, hips and leg area. I really want to capture that. Uh, him having to shuffle around, so I was thinking of him as doing this kind of penguin walk. Um, you know, not only is the goop that he drips um, impeding his walk, but also his body himself. So uh, rather than having uh, a higher, you know, groin area, as it were, uh, they make it a low slung kind of uh, would play uh, and visualize that kind of uh, that weird um, walk that he might have. So that's what I was working on uh, today. Um, I actually did some of the coloring there uh, yesterday. Um, I think I might actually either go two ways, either continue and paint a new version of him, uh, which is the finalized, more finalized version. You know, maybe get the colors in uh, and see how that would look. Because um, uh, sure, the, the green and yellow actually I do like, but at the same time, um, I think I would like to try some alternate colors. Um, but also, there's another character, another movie design here that I'm thinking of working on today, uh, which is this is the bouncy Mugu. So now for the bouncy Mugu, um, again, 
uh, another movie type. Uh, this one, uh, actually, if I show you some of the earlier concepts of it, really was kind of started from this. You know, I was pulling from old kind of animator tricks and working with pillowcases and seeing what kind of, you know, how can you make a simple thing like a pillowcase just seem alive. Uh, so I was really thinking there of how would this thing move? Um, jump on two feet, a uh, single, f you know, a double foot jump or a single foot jump. Um, uh, and then also I want to kind of play around with the shape of itself and make it quite different from the rest. Because um, right now the way it kind of looks is that there's the fire moogle on one side uh, in size of scale. And you have the dense moogle which is larger. And then now with the stick of moogle I think it's also on the larger side. Uh, at least that's what I'm making it toward. And then even the sketch I did for the blue moogle, uh, which I haven't shown yet, that one is also kind of the larger side. So I wanted to get a smaller creature in there uh movie type and so uh i figured well the bouncy one is a nice place to put it you know it's uh i figure the way i see is a lot of things that are larger tend to be slower moving and with the bouncy move coming off that is quite fast moving i figured okay uh, we do need a smaller creature so why don't i make it on uh base it on a smaller uh animal itself so when i was researching you know um uh, real world animals, you know, uh, I was looking at various creatures that hop, and and uh, well, I was looking at chinchillas was one of them. Here it's like a two-legged version of that. I like the shape of it, the size of the head, just like the proportions of, of that animal. Um, so I did a few sketches of that in even the small alterations, uh, just, you know, like length of the feet themselves, the legs. Um, I did like the cap idea, so I kind of copy and paste that a few times, just in, and then tried different body types to it. Um, yeah, it came across like, okay, well, what would it look like if a frog, you know, the, the jumping mugu, bouncy mugu had like uh, resembled more like a frog, of course, because you know, frogs jump. Um, and then there's this chicken. Uh, type of version um, not so much that chickens jump but I liked having a movie that was wasn't quite upright and kind of forward shifted and then uh, keeping with the whole um, idea of it jumping I wanted to do the legs a bit different um, now some of these designs were actually made prior to um, Knowing that I was be working, I would be working with a common rig between all these moves too. So even though it was still possible to pull off, um, it couldn't be done without some alterations to the rig. Um, so what I ended up with was uh, actually I see some additional versions. Um, this one, which was if you see the in dark background, the Vanilla Mugu and its rig from last week, and then just a few, uh, a, a couple lines, uh, outlines of what it would be necessary to reproduce that chicken version, um, and then how would it be needed to be modified to work with the rig. Um, and in the end, even though I, during one of the meetings this week, I said, you know, I might scrap the idea of the chicken. Uh, just because I'm not sure if it was possible to pull off a little heavy modification, I ended up getting it. Uh, so it's this weird uh, version that is split between, I think, kind of the chinchilla version and then the chicken version. Um, I think it has a nice, quite different outline than um, the other Mugu, you know, with the more predominant and skinnier legs, the rounder. Uh, body and the cap itself, which is probably um, about the same s size area as the body itself. So, um, I'm quite happy with, sorry, excuse me, uh, with uh, the way this looks. Uh, this is the side view. Now, I want to avoid it. Like, I have things like here, like I actually drew in the tail in the sketch. 
uh, but I don't think I'll be keeping that uh, because I, I wanted to kind of have you know some other feel of a you know a chicken without actually being a chicken. I don't want it to stray too far away from it being a mushroom. Um, so I will have to put some additional details here that might pull it back into being um, more long on the the fungus side of things. Uh, although a quite a uh, modified version of the standard Mugu. But you see here how the, the it does fit the rig. I do have to say I'm not sure how well that is still going to be. I have to show our 3 mother, Maddie if this is going to be workable without uh, some heavy changes. Uh, but who knows, maybe maybe it's okay. Um, yeah, so those are the things that I have. Um, two things I work on are either the front view of this uh, chicken chicken mugu, junk bouncy mugu, or I do the coloring, recoloring of the finalized version of the sticky mugu. Um, coloring would be great. I always enjoy color, but I think this is doing the the front view of this guy would be actually be more beneficial. So I'm going to actually work on that. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to first pull up um, duplicate this layer, bring it out. And then hide this. Cool. So what I see on screen right now is the So what I see now is a vertical line which I'm going to use for um, making the symmetrical uh, line drawing of the front view. Uh, in red you see the outlines of the rig and the vanilla mugu so i want to get uh i want to get the proportions i mean the same like the starting the height uh and then you see the side view of the current uh bouncy mugu uh so i'm going to So I hit the sketch there. Now I'm going to drop down to opacity. So everything is at quite a low opacity. And then for the rig, I'm going to scale it up to match. The height of my drawing. And then move it over. Yeah, I think everything is in line. So I got a couple reference points there, and now I'm going to create a new layer uh, and see if I have, no, I don't have it on. So we're going to turn on here is the drawing guide. I'm going to make it available on drawing assist here. So now what will happen is. I get a symmetrical outline whenever I draw a line on both sides. Seeing as how there's a front view and each of those are going to be uh, even on both sides, that's what I want. I want to be symmetrical. So, 
Actually, what I'm going to do right now is actually pull up some achievement. And all the real life chicken heads do not look like what I kind of need, so I'm going to just kind of uh, not bother now. Um, As you see already, it doesn't quite match what the other one, uh, what my side view, <laughs> view did. Um, there are That's one thing that I'm always still getting used to is like doing um, a character from two angles and making sure everything lines up it was easy enough to do a side profile view uh, but now translating that to a front view um, really makes me question how things are actually seen so now the first thing i'm noticing here is like yeah maybe this is where the beak part would be and this is how high it would reach and if this is kind of like that uh going down but as you see over here on the side profile, the, the cheek or jawline, it actually drops lower than the beak. So how would that kind of look? I don't know. Would it like, would it drop here? And then go up? I guess it could look like that. But it's really weird when I'm drawing it, like thinking, is that the way it should be? Anyways, I'm just right now roughing it in. I'll go back a second time to get everything clean. Um, now for the eyes. Where do I want my eyes to look? So it's funny, even though I have this uh, this thing in the background, which is the rig uh, bones, um, it's funny, this whole triangle thing and this bar right here kind of does make it look like it's a beak. But anyways, so I think that's okay. I think that's okay. Um, I think I could work with that. And if this is how low, I saw how the body appears uh, from side view, things line up. And now for the legs, I think they just jet out. There's no. I mean, I guess it has a crotch area to say it, but instead of having like the drop between the, you know, between each leg, uh, each leg will just kind of appear, coming stemming from the torso.
think that's it. It's something as simple as this. Just from the front view, it doesn't look like much at all. I mean, it does kind of look like a chicken. I'm sure, Maddie will be happy about that. Um, but yeah, it's quite simple looking. Uh, this is all that's needed. So now I'm gonna go. Now I don't need the reference points of the height for things. I'm gonna hide the other um, group. Just trying to bouncy move it all. So now what I have here is still, I have the rig, which I can now hide. Uh, so now I just have the outline I just did, and I'm going to do it one more time, uh, but very cleanly. So it means just like, you know, I don't want this weird peak here going on. Turn on what drawing this is so I get that symmetry line. So even though, you know, I'm thinking I'm going to draw on this beak, uh, I think actually moves have, each of them has, has a mouth that it's just going to be like that. Um, I mean, that's a very simple head, very cute. Um, but I guess when you're looking at things like this from a certain angle, that's all it is, it's just a simple so simple spheres, um, not much to it. Doesn't require more than I've already laid out here. And with it being a low poly game and these creatures that could in our game kind of number in the thousand, um, having they're going to be really small on screen anyways and putting in a lot of detail probably would just get lost. So even though right now it seems like such a, um, a simple design, almost to a point it doesn't really call for more. So I'm happy. I'm okay with it, kind of looking like this. Um, I'm sure whenever I draw this belly button, uh, certain people will wince. But each move has a belly button, whether or not it looks exactly like this or not. I'm okay with that. Um, 
Yeah, so this is surprisingly almost done. It was a lot simpler than expected. Um, Doesn't look like much from the front, I guess, but that's all it takes. Uh, I'll probably have to take a look at this one more time to make sure that I'm actually conceiving this properly uh, from two angles, and that is not, in fact, kind of totally off. Um, there, so I'll turn that one off. I'll turn on. Let's see my room. Open them up. Raise that. I'm actually going to duplicate him. Duplicate this whole group because I want to keep the rig. Um, combined. You get a lot of layers here un almost unnecessarily, but I'd rather just duplicate and move the temporary ones rather than move and then move back the good copies. All right, so now we're looking at two viewpoints. And I think that's okay. Somewhat. Like I guess on this guy. Uh... <laughs> Excuse me. Um, what you, what's kind of hidden here, uh, it's good, it's still, So the adjustments I'm gonna make are probably bringing in. You can see that this over here. I know I got my symmetry salon. Bring it in there. So it's weird. Um, I think that's okay. I think that's all right. I think I'm gonna do the eyes probably um, narrowed up a little bit or angled slightly differently. But I think everything else is okay. Um, again, it's very simple looking from the front. I mean, both both sides are quite simple. Um, but yeah, I think I'm just gonna make that one change of adding a slight dimple on the side of the head. And then I think we're done for this this guy. Actually, open up. So it appears somewhere right here. Trying to hide it. I'm not sure if that's the best thing. I'm not sure if that was necessary. 
I'll actually undo that. I'll then pass it off to Muller, Maddie, and then get her opinion as into uh, how things really need to be able to work. I think this is good enough for a starting point for her to work with. Um, so I'm going to leave it there. And actually, with another half hour to go, I guess I will do some... Uh, I guess I will be doing some coloring today on the uh, the sticky moo. So yeah, so well, there's your first uh, <laughs> look at the bouncy moo. So I'm probably gonna keep these. Delete that guy. Turn this guy on. Yeah. Probably also want to get the vanilla wine that I was using here. Turn it into a group. So when I export that, Maddie will be uh, can get that and work with that. And we have two groups here. I'll rename this one. Cool, so I'm going to turn. Rig back on. So I'm free to like actually share it. So I think this is good enough. I'm actually going to share it right through here, right through Slack, sharing it to Maddie. Um, close that one. Hi. Turn that one. And then send this one also. So now she has um, both views of the bouncy move. And if she is free, she can go ahead and start uh, working on this one. Cool. All right. So that's out of the way. Now I can go to back to some fun stuff, which is um, coloring the sticky move. Again, I did have a colored version here earlier. I did quick one yesterday. Uh, now I want to go try some other colors. Um, put a bit more detail in there. And see what this might end up looking like. So, that's what we're going to do. So, first thing. Um... Gonna duplicate this. Gonna hide that extra one. Gonna call this one color. Now I'm gonna duplicate it again because there's a small thing I don't I don't need the line work on which is um, I need to hide should I turn this one off I don't want to go down there I need to hide some of this part all the goop I kind of drew in 
I just I don't want that to show through like I did. Like I don't mind having the lines on the body, but I do really want to create an effect when I paint this that the goo sits on top of the mesh. So I know I say that, and it's easy enough for me to color that way. I'm sure our technical artist and uh, our modeler are going to be wondering how that's going to be pulled off. Um, but I'm going to draw the concept that way, and hopefully it will end up looking that, like that way and won't be too much of a headache for them. I think I should actually draw on the side view. It's a little more interesting than the front view. Make this easier myself. I'm just going to increase the size of the brush. And because I forgot to draw in the goop on the side view, uh, on his legs, I saved some of his time here. Though you do see some goop here on his cap. Cool. Blank slate. Now the belly button looks a little bit like a penis from the side. I have to show it somehow. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do, um, I got like 20 minutes left, so there's enough time for me to play around. Um, I'm going to lay in some flats. Right in there. Our airbrush kind of just enough where I can get right to the edges without actually going over. So this is just a flat. And since I'm working on a different layer, I can't just fill it. It's a slow part of the process, but it's usually very beneficial. All right, there we go. Done. There you go. Cool. Touch up some of the areas. Great. Turn on alpha lock there. So what I could do now is start uh, doing some soft airbrushing and knowing that uh, won't affect the background. Um,
So again, it kind of looks bland, but once I start putting in um, the layer for the goop, uh, even which I don't mind starting right now, which will look really funky. Oh, green goop. I think there's. I think already we said that we use a lot of green in the game, so maybe I do want to uh, dial it back where I can. Even that means like when I think of goo, I think of green. So what I'm doing is now is I guess it's. Again, when I'm drawing these types of things, you'll be amazed by just all the little details that have to be thought through. So when I was even drawing the, the goo on his belly here, I wanted to think of like, if it's drip, it, how viscous is this goo? Um, is it sliding off him? If it's sliding off him downwards, then it has this vertical uh, parts to the goo, which, you know, are over here and over here and here. Um, rather than a splat, which is, you know, is more rounded. So I wanted to make it look like it's sliding off him. So that meant uh, including parts in the goo that look like they're more vertical. So they have that um, downward pull to them. Um, at the same time, having some uh, more curved cur curved areas to the goo outline was actually a little more dynamic so finding that balance between um, visual cues uh, to, to mimic the type of material versus uh, taking some creative license to make it look more interesting. Um, there's that balance that has to be taken there. Um, let me pull this thing up from yesterday. There's a bit some detail. Almost done. So again. Oh my god, they're doing the wrong Ugh Freaking hate this. Alright. Did it on the same layer instead of creating a new layer. It's my bad. That is totally my bad. I shouldn't have done that. Uh, what do I do? Do I want to redo it all over again? No. Gee, it's not bad. That means I get to not worry about a couple of things. So kind of screwed up there. I did on the same layer rather than uh, creating, doing that line on a different layer. Uh, but this is actually what I needed anyways, just the outline of the goop and not the outlines of the of it uh, in black ink. So this kind of works. Uh, the downside is that cutting and pasting it left a very 
very sharp edge to everything. It's not as, uh, what do you call that, anti-aliased as I would have liked it. So I might just go back in and soften everything up um, just by re-outlining it. Don't, not necessary, but I can be a stickler at times for even small things like that. So again, um, ooh, unfortunate. It means I have to spend a little bit of time just cleaning this up, um, but still got the desired effect of what I was after, anyways. Um, maybe I don't want to go through the hassle of softening everything. Um, actually, what does that look like? Okay, so there's that area there. So This area here that I don't need. Oh man, exactly where I put that drip. So this is just about done. So the design, oh man, I forgot on his feet too. So he has some on his feet. Because he wherever he goes, he's gonna have this. The way I envision it is like he leaves these smaller puddles everywhere he goes. His tracks. Um, these won't be the ones that I think um, impede the walking of uh, other enemies. Because you could stick them in it. Um, but definitely something like more akin to footprints of goop. That don't actually do anything but uh, visually look interesting. Cool. So I think that's it. That's it for that. Um, now, once I, I turn down the 
an opacity. But now that I did that, I can do um, interesting things like uh, yeah, changing the color, shift of it. Soft airbrush. Get that orange tint to it, turn it down. I think that was too strong. So that, that's looking interesting. Uh, there's no shadows on it. Um, Put a highlight layer on there. Bright yellow, hard brush, not big, not full opacity. Um, something was taught long, long ago in art class. It was in like a figure drawing class. Uh, we had, you know, a new model in class, and my drawing instructor at the time, you know, we had to do these uh, drawings in in charcoal, basically, and uh, we were also given the option to use, uh, you know, put in highlights. On these you know charcoal drawings just so it gives a hot flash of like where uh, light really hits the body and reflects but it uh, it's very subtle and one thing is uh, that he said was that I think like three percent when you're putting highlights on drawings it doesn't need to be a lot it could just be very subtle uh, and not widely used like everywhere. And that's the thing, is like it he's completely right. Like to get these highlights, it just all it takes is just like to put in like just the smallest areas. And that is what really makes it believable. Uh, you don't need to overuse uh, and place highlights everywhere, just in the smallest area, the smallest three percent. Oh, look at the time, I'm almost done. Not, not done drawing this, but 
I'm also not going to stay on much longer. So maybe next week I'll show you what the finished product ends up looking like. Um, I'm just making it look like there's little bubbles in here in the goop. Um, Brush, make my brush really small. Do some of the edges to it. Dark green. And dark green there. Hey, to Takoha. Uh, what drawing program am I using? Sorry if I didn't look up and see your comment for a while. Uh, I'm using Procreate uh, for the iPad. Um, it's probably the best drawing program on the iPad right now. Um, there's a quite a large selection of them, uh, but for my personal preference, um, raster based artwork uh, is best done on the iPad and Procreate and I think there's a lot of people out there that feel the same way. Uh, other options you have are the recently released uh, Affinity Affinity uh, Designer uh, which is more vector based. Um, do I have the drawing pen? Yep. I'm using the Apple Pencil right now so I'm going to show you. Yeah, so that's what I'm using right now to draw. Uh, so, yeah, just in case you're wondering, I'm not on a PC or a Mac. I'm actually working off a iPad Pro right now um, for drawing. Uh, I, I love the way it handles. I love the way it feels. Uh, and it's always weird for me nowadays to go back to, like, a, a tablet like a Cintiq or a Intuos or any of the other... Um, desktop versions of a tablet. Yeah, so just a couple more little bits here. And then I think I'm gonna, going to call it a day. So here you go, Takoha. Hopefully you've uh, you've joined in the past and have seen the progress. Um, there's still a lot to be done here, but uh, I think right now uh, I'm I'm done for the day. Thanks for joining. Hopefully you join again next week. Um, is this your first time joining this channel, uh, Takoha? Uh, this uh, stream. Uh, we're making a game called. Terrarium, and yeah, if you check our other videos, you see a lot of the progress we made and all the characters, and then uh, uh, a lot of stuff that's out there. And hopefully, you come back and watch next week. Cool. So, again, um, got some work done today uh, some light painting and another turnaround sheet for a 3D modeler uh, for our two newer types of movie. Um, if you join again next Friday at 3 o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time, you'll be able to watch me possibly either continue on this guy, but most likely I'll be moving on and hopefully I'll have some 
uh, other Mugu to show you and maybe some backgrounds. Uh, so yeah, join us again. Uh, this is Jeff at Stitch Media. Uh, making some fungus Mugu guys for Terrarium. Uh, I will see you guys again. Thanks.